Hello, everyone. <laughs> it's my salutation from days of old. <laughs> but today we're going to talk about something that's important, just so you, so you have the information. And I'm going to post some important links about this, because it's important for people to understand their rights and who is hired by who. <laughs> so that you understand who's, who's boss of who. So um, this, is, this has to do with the airports, and it has to do with the airlines. And for those who are requesting wheelchair services, okay? So the wheelchair services is provided by the airline. They hire a company to do this. And um, those companies hang out at the airport. <laughs> so they're trained and instructed by the airline what kind of services they want to see happen. Uh, so I want that, you know, because sometimes there's a confusion as to where these um, wheelchair servers um, uh, come from. And they're just a company that's hired by the airlines. So if you call Delta or you call United Health. Uh, United, sorry, United Health, <laughs> United, <laughs> or you are connected with American Airlines, they will provide, the, they're paying for those services. You do not have to give tips, okay, in any airport for any circumstances. Um, and they've made that very clear across the board in, in all airports now. So if you if you offer a tip to the person they take it, that's one thing. But the person who's providing that service to you may not be getting, should not get pushy and demand a tip from you. That is out. That should not happen ever. So what should you do? Some of us are quads. Some of us have had strokes. And we don't have use of our hands. So, you know, to go in our purse or whatever, to go in our satchel and get money out is, is not feasible. First of all, the people who give you rides in the uh, wheelchairs should never ask for tips, never. They're already paid uh, for the service. If you offer a tip and they take it, that's one thing. But usually, you know, I've been offering tips lately and they haven't taken them. So something has changed, and that's a good change. So, um, so just understand for the tips, you do not have to give any tips whatsoever. Those workers are covered, okay? I know that some people will say, well, Lisa, they work really hard and things like that, X, Y, Z. But um, truly, they are already paid by their company, uh, by the airlines who pays the company for them to provide wheelchair service. Uh, so your rights are, are to <laughs> just get the service. That's it. So if somebody says, well, there's no wheelchair, so there's no this or no that, the airlines is responsible. Now, what covers you in terms of rights when you're going through airport and using an airlines? Uh, you know, there's debates, but we have the ACAA, which is the um, air, <laughs> see, I usually forget it. <laughs> but the ACAA is, is the big one, because that covers airlines, and that one covers some portions of the airport. In the airport, they also have the ADAA, um, and they'll have some small sections of the ADAA, uh, the A ADA that will, will cover you. I just saw one airport that uses the ADA for other issues of discrimination. So um, that would be the Orlando <laughs> International, which is very odd because the ACAA is the one that should be covering us. Uh, but. Uh, I also wanted to cover this other uh, piece. Uh, I think it's been clear across airlines already, but let me put it out there because these are your rights. Um, and these are, if, if you are a wheelchair user, 
you always have to wait for all the people to disembark and then they help you out, right? And your wheelchair should be at the door <laughs> of the airplane, not of any other door at the airplane. And you really need to enforce that. You really need to um, request that from the very beginning to leave your wheelchair at arrival at the, at the, um, at the plane door so that when they take you out, you just hop in your wheelchair and you go do whatever you need to do. Some airlines, some stewardess, some staff have gotten confused about this. Um, and they have delivered wheelchairs to other departments, <laughs> to the luggage department, to this department, to that department. No, that should never happen. They should always deliver. If you use a wheelchair, that wheelchair, wheelchair should come back to you to the airplane door. So when you get step out of that airplane, your wheelchair is right there. If you get into a situation in which they say, well, sorry, but your wheelchair is at the luggage area, so you have to go down there and get your own wheelchair, <laughs> just smile and just say, no, I'm waiting for my wheelchair. You have to bring it to me at the door of the airplane. Um, and they'll make a whole bunch of fuss. If they do, they shouldn't, you know. And they'll just make a big fuss. Oh, no, that's not our responsibility, blah, blah, blah. It is. All staff by now should know this. <laughs> so um, they might need some retraining, uh, which is going to happen because if you're stuck in that situation, just be relaxed. Just stay there. It's your right for them to bring your wheelchair, no matter where they dropped it off, to bring it to you so that you can be taken out of the airplane and then you just hop into your own wheelchair and off you go. It has happened several times in which, you know, the person is waiting to be taken out after everybody is disembarked, but the wheelchair is not there. So it's not your problem, it's theirs because that's their responsibility to always bring the wheelchair to the wheelchair user. Uh, so I just want you to know that. And they'll just put up a fuss sometimes, sometimes, rarely, but sometimes. And they'll say, well, you have to get off and figure out how you're gonna do this where we need you off because we need to clean the plane. No, you need to go get my wheelchair. It's their responsibility. No other responsibility, no other. So they might say, well, then we might have to call the police. Let them, <laughs> let them, because that benefits you, and they'll have to pay you for the, the stress that they put you through. <laughs> so they say, we're gonna have to call the police, and they'll be, you know, you better get off this plane. <laughs> you can just chuckle and say, I'm sorry, but instead of arguing with me, you could have gotten my wheelchair by now. <laughs> so, um, and you can request, I want to see your CR CRO, which is the commissioner responsible for people with disabilities. So you can say, go get the CRO. And the CRO will come and just say, yes, the passenger is right. Go get their wheelchair, please, now. So, and they'll, you know, apologize. They'll interview you and ask you, you know, what, what happened, what were all the conversations, um, and they will, you know, tackle the staff and say, well, all of you, thank you very much, <laughs> but you will have to go back to training. So, and they might pay you, you know, and the airlines might send an apology the CRO's department certainly will send you an apology and let you know that you were correct and a violation was committed. And uh, so, <laughs> so you know, you have rights. And I'm gonna make sure that I find them and post them either in the description down below or in um, the 
video itself. Uh, but I'll find all that. But it's important for you to take a look at the ACAA and look at disabilities and know your rights. It's really important for every one of us to know our rights. So when these things happen, you know, that we're on the ball, that we're really on the ball. And hold on here because the lights are really bothering me. Hold on. I am much better now. <laughs> you can see me much better. So uh, this is really important for all people with wheelchairs who fly. Review the ACAA. Be alert to what your rights are so that when <laughs> weird stuff happens that you um, are ready to respond in a very calm, natural way. There's no need to argue because you're right <laughs> and they're wrong. <laughs> so. It usually happens that way that we're right and they're wrong and a violation has committed <laughs> been committed and they have to go back to training every <laughs> single one of those people <laughs> including the pilot but um, rules and regulations are, are going to be tighter in the next few months um, because there was a big meeting and um, they agreed to add some rules and regulations for the ACAA to help us. You know, there are certain things we requested, so it's been put in. So, folks, this is a little complicated, I know. It's like, okay, Lisa, so what am I supposed to do? Okay, so when you're ordering your ticket, you let them know right away when you're ordering your ticket online. For the most part, we do it that way. Um, then you can say, need a use of a, of a wheelchair or will bring my own wheelchair. If you bring your own wheelchair, you, you must um, tag it. You, you go to the desk and they'll put some tags on it. And then you can use your wheelchair all the way up to the gate. Then at the gate, they will um, take your wheelchair. They'll put you, they'll transfer you over to the aisle wheelchair and get you settled in the plane. So, <coughs> and you remind them, I want my wheelchair back when the airplane uh, arrives at the next destination. Nowhere else, right here. So, and they'll say, yes, yes, ma'am, we'll, we'll do that. Yes, sir, um, we have it on the ticket. So it will be right at the door of the plane when you arrive at the other end. So that needs to be said very clearly several times. <laughs> Different people. Um, but to make it clear. Um, I, I'm sure that this will get a little bit smoother as the years go by. Um, I know the DOT is about to pass some new laws and um, some new fines for airports and airlines uh, for violating the rights of people with disabilities. I don't think it, ca it, it matters what disability, but especially those of us who use wheelchairs. My hope is that soon we'll be able to drive our wheelchair into the airplane and just settle in and get strapped down. And then we have our wheelchair. It's in our possession. We can go in the airplane and out. So I'm sure they're working on all kinds of details right now because I think the deadline for all of this is within three years. By then, it has to be resolved. But I think in the next year, two years, there's, there's going to be a lot of changes uh, for the better. So um, it helps if we, we review our, our rights and responsibilities, and they read their rights and responsibilities so they don't, don't, don't get sent back to training <laughs> and get scolded for doing the wrong thing. So that's the video I wanted to make. And I wanted to make it clear. The airlines is one company and the airport is another. So what the airport does is one thing and what the airlines has to do is another. So the airlines are the ones who hire the, the wheelchair pushers, let's call them that. And um, they just hang out at the airport. The airport doesn't want these people to do anything crazy or wrong either. So 
If they are under the roof of the airport, the airport needs to make sure that they are also respectful and handling you well, respectfully, as a person with disabilities. So, um, so that's why they have the CRO that looks at both, you know, the airport and the airlines. So, so if you had any questions, don't. The airlines hires the wheelchair uh, service. And while the wheelchair service hangs out at the airport, the people at the staff at the airport make sure that um, the wheelchair people company is respecting you all the way through the airport. So I'm hoping that makes sense. And if you've had any issues, um, it's important to call the CRO or the Department uh, for Disabilities uh, for the um, for the traveler, not for the employees, but for the travelers. So I'm handling one situation for the Orlando uh, International Airport right now uh, from one of our members that posted a situation. So um, I'm hoping that he'll come around again and see this video. So uh, I will post as much as I can so that if you're traveling through an airport often and are having some issues, know that there is a, uh, you, you can go to the search at the airport, the CRO, or needs of people with disabilities, and call that number as soon as you can uh, to give them information, and then they'll work with you, they'll interview you, get the details of what's going on, then they'll go over to the airlines and say, hey, this is what happened when you were transporting this individual we don't want that to happen at our airport. So then they have to work together. So the airlines and the airport. So, so that's, that's really crucial. So I wanted to put this video out there if there's any questions or any difficulties you have not solved recently, like say in the less than 90 days, then, and you want some help in how to navigate that please make a post and I can assist you in connecting you with the right person. Uh, but look for the CRO of that particular airport and uh, they will call you back within a short, within 24 hours at least and interview you to see, you know, what happened and what are the details, um, what did you try, you know, to solve that problem what did they do to try to solve that issue? And um, also, if the airlines is not behaving and not treating people with disabilities with respect, the airport also wants to know that. <laughs> so not only the airlines, but the airport. So they have to collaborate with each other. And, and the Department of Transportation, which is on top of all of this, also wants uh, issues resolved within a short period of time. And one last detail, if you arrive and there's any damage to your wheelchair, then you also need to contact the CRO before you leave the airport and to let them know, show them the damage and uh, a report will be made, uh, arrangements will be made in terms of getting you a replacement if needed or a repair. So that all has to arra be arranged when you are at the airport. Do not leave the airport with your wheelchair and then call, because then it'll be dismissed. So that's really important to know. Any damage to your wheelchair upon arrival, please contact the CRO right away. Uh, thank you for coming, as always. And I'm hoping that this video clarifies some things for you. I'm going to leave the link for the ACAA so you can read it through and know what the obligations are of the staff. These rules, as they are right now, are going to be strengthened uh, in the next few months. So there will be a little bit of a change 
uh, to what you're reading today. Uh, some fines and some other things are going to happen to the ACAA if they commit or continue to commit any of these mistakes with people with disabilities, uh, just so you know. So um, I'm hoping that this is helpful, it's clear, and if you have any questions, uh, you want to share any stories, uh, feel free. If you've had any incident in the last 90 days, please feel free to call the CRO of that particular airport and report the situation so that that can be reviewed and corrected. All right, folks, uh, that was it. I'm hoping truly that this was helpful. And um, any issues that, or still you might have some questions about who to contact, uh, just let me know and I will, I can assist you in finding the correct person. All right, take care and see you in the next video.